thank you for coming and job over her last five years of tenure with us. There's plenty of uh, you know, social media and uh, more information online if you wish. You can obviously scan. For the war, foreign entrepreneurs to take a chance on America, to make an investment and be rewarded with potentially a golden visa or a fast track access to the U.S. and ultimately that U.S. passport. Uh, in fact, Biden was in office or in Congress when they created this program, and so it's been around for quite some time. The program requires an $800,000 investment. You can do that through a payment plan. When you make an initial investment, you file your application, later payments can be due at a later time. I know you're going to have plenty of questions as I go through my presentation, because there's so many people in the room that actually are going to have questions, allow me to get through my presentation and then I'll create a time for us where you can raise your hand and ask questions at that time. The U.S. passport. Does it really make me into a U.S. person? Yes, a green card makes you into a U.S. person with all the rights, benefits, and privileges of being a U.S. person. A green card holder and a U.S. passport holder, there's not that many differences. All the rights are pretty much the same. The only difference is you cannot vote in a national election, you can't work for the FBI, and you don't have a passport yet, but you're on your way to it. After holding your green card for a period of five years, you can ultimately then trade it in and then take on the U.S. nationality and the U.S. passport. As I've stated, the program has been around for over 30 years, where thousands of families have been successful in making it to the U.S. and getting their U.S. green card and U.S. passport. However, over the years, the program we require more changes. So certain stakeholders within the EB-5 community have been working with Congress to bring about those changes. Those changes came a few years ago when we had a reauthorization. A lot of positive, positive energy and positive points have come about with the changes that we've made with Congress. Um, for the future benefit of the kids. Why is that? Because there's a, a lot of value that you'll unlock just with education, okay? So let's go through it. When you do this program, you become a U.S. person, and all the rights and privileges of a U.S. person are then afforded to you. Certain schools, you'll have a greater chance of getting in, as tax dollars are paid from the general population for specific programs, so there's an obligation to let in U.S. people or persons of that state before they look international. So you're getting into the better schools. And guess what? Once you gain your green card, parents are not out of pocket for educational expenses for their kids. Let's discuss that. The US government steps in the shoes of parents for providing for tuition, housing, books, transportation, all costs associated with being a student. Why does the states provide this benefit? When I was at UCLA, I worked two jobs while I studied. You know, and this is important because if you're looking to get into certain graduate programs, they're looking to see if you've had paid opportunities alongside your professors. If you want to get into Harvard Medical School, have you done blood work at a hospital during your time off? Or did you just simply study? So having work authorization is really important while your kids study in the U.S. Notwithstanding, there is a program in the U.S. called OCI, on-campus interviews. So in the last year of study, companies such as IBM, Tesla, you name it, they come onto campuses and they interview uh, these students, provide job offers so that by the time they graduate, they're already ready to enter into the workforce. So this is a chart that sort of proves up this is, this, these benefits are not just for public school. The assumption is, well, you know, my son or daughter doesn't want to study in a public school, such as Berkeley, they want to go to a private school at Harvard. Well, no. The benefits are across the board, whether they choose to go to public school or private school. So what are the requirements? What are the things that we need to do together for you to ultimately be successful? So there's really three main requirements here. You have to obviously invest the capital, and that's a government minimum amount of $800,000. That could be through a payment plan. You can file your application with $200,000 now, the remainder would be due, for example, after a year, but at least you're getting into queue and you're getting your process started. That investment will be in a government pre-approved project, whereby that project has to prove up that your investment has created 10 new jobs in the U.S. economy.
So just by virtue of buying stock in the U.S. or buying real estate, that's not enough for you to be able to get this access. Your investment will be in a government pre-approved project, whereby the project will have to prove up that your investment has created jobs in the U.S. economy. The third most important element is that we have to prove up how you made that money to be able to afford this program. The U.S. government does not care whether, you know, what your nationality might necessarily be or whether if you're a business owner or your doctor in a hospital, your vocation, none of this matters. They just want to prove up the families that they take through this program. Um, we can explain their source of funds, how they made their money. They essentially want to clean out and ensure the applicants that come through come from clean backgrounds. After a review and I'm happy that we'll get an approval, we'll also then start looking at government pre-approved projects together. Projects that my firm has reviewed myself and it meets certain criteria where we sense you'll be happy, there won't be a sense of embarrassment, you'll be happy and you'll get through, get your green card quickly, get your funds back at year five and ultimately be successful. These are groups that I've been working with in the industry as long as I have been, that I've known, worked with, have had good rapport with them, where they've completed 50 immigration projects in the past at least. They've all been completed, everyone's received their green cards, everyone's in line to receive their funds back on time. I'll say that again. There's only about four groups out of the 600 that can demonstrate that they've repaid everyone back on time and the full amount. So we work with those groups, but even within those groups, we look within their portfolios as they'll be offering various different projects and the ones that make better sense. I'll show you an example of a project that a lot of our clients have invested in from the GCC, specifically from Dubai, but from the GCC. Uh, they're now in the US, they're happy, uh, and uh, it's been quite a successful project. So this is the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in New York City, in Manhattan, in Midtown. This hotel is now complete. Uh, this hotel, the construction finance, came from GCC investors. Um, so you can now stay here, although it's expensive, I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but nevertheless, it is a fantastic project that's been complete. And if you go um, sort of on Expedia or whatever, you can book to stay at this hotel. So this is an example of a great project. With that said, is this something that I would recommend to you today? Maybe, maybe not, actually. Think about this. The complexity of this project is over 50 stories. Okay. The permits required for something of this scale are extraordinary. We had COVID. So if there's a lockdown scenario, period, perhaps this might not be the best understanding where we are today. So I can show you an example of a project that maybe makes a little bit more sense as I've shown uh, to my other clients. That still wasn't enough to have a choice in the decade of the making. Not only were we underbuilding for a decade, but then we get to the pandemic and then these massive buy-by housing. The home prices rise fast in many parts of the country. So if you are you know, waiting for the market to really get, it's not going to happen. So this was featured um, last week. So this is a fresh video. I always like to update my presentations, and really this is what's going on in America today. This is a good one. So again, with the new initiatives in working with Congress. You can now file your application, move tomorrow, or it says move now, it's supposed to move now, and you've got a payment plan to then make your payments out of future date. So this is possible. Other groups don't do this. I've been actually doing this, uh, again, from Dubai specifically for the last 12 years, these payment plan models, as I know how to get them approved. Uh, so if you're thinking about, well, let me just get my money together and then I'll consider it. Why? It's going to become expensive later. It's going to become more difficult. File your application with $200,000 now, and then you'd be given some time in a controlled manner and without rush to make the remainder payment. And I'm sure you've got tons of questions. We can only take about like 10 or 12. 